In 192 BC, Rome is at war with King Antiochus III, the sixth Seleucid king. Now, at his time, the empire had reached its peak. In the east, it started from India. In the south, it reached Gaza. He controlled all of India, uh, Parthia, Iran, Assyria, Syria, Phoenicia, Asia Minor, Israel, up to Gaza. And in the west, he, he, he conquered most of mainland Greece. Ilia, Agamania, Thessaly, uh, Avia. And all this was reversed, so he lost mainland Greece in just one battle, the Battle of Immobile in the summer of 191 BC. The next year, the Battle of Magnesia, by the Scipios, was defeated by the Scipios and he lost, and he lost a great part of uh, Asia Minor. And he dies, what, two and a half years later, he's dead, and the Empire is the satellite of Rome. His relatives, his sons, nothing more but client kings, satellites of Rome. But here, until the summer, in the summer of 191 BC, the empire reached its peak, came close to controlling the world. Oh, and who else was with him in this battle? In the battle of Immobile against the Romans. Hannibal Barker! Hannibal Barker was with him in the battle, of course. Now, you can see the war, uh, you, you can see the war of uh, King of the Ogles, uh, Afimobile, the ramparts he built. I, sw I swam at the, at the hot spring, of course. I walked along the, um, the ramparts of King of the Ogles. Yeah, it's quite low, you can easily cross it. Um, so here's the account by the great Augustan uh, historian Titus Livy, who always gives uh, lower casualty figures to the Romans and higher casualty figures to the enemies of Rome. Now, in this brief video, we want to talk about the Battle of Thermobile. Now, everyone knows about the battle uh, that King Leonidas of Sparta fought against the, uh, the Persians. But hardly anyone knows about the other battles, the battle that the uh, the Gauls fought against the Southern Greeks, or the um, or the one that I'm going to read right now, the battle that King and the Orcs fought against the uh, the Romans, the Roman consul Marcus Seculius Glabro. With a spirit holy and like theirs, that's the King Leonidas at the time, and the Orcs pitched his camp within the gates, to the place, and besides blocked the pass with fortifications. And when he had strengthened everything, the double wall and a ditch, and with the situation demanded, a rampart constructed out of a great quantity of stones, which were scattered all about, confident that the Roman army would never force a passage. Now, of the 4,000 Italians, for so many had assembled, he sent a uh, part to hold Iraklia with the garrison, part to Hibada, being both certain that the consul would attack Heraclea and informed by many messages that all the country around Ibada had been devastated. Now the consul, ha having first ravaged the fields of Ibada and then of Heraclea, the aid of the Italians being useless to both, encamped within the pass itself, near the springs of hot water, facing the king. Now both conditions of Italians shut themselves up in Heraclea. King and the office to whom before he saw the enemy, everything seemed well fortified and guarded by posts, was war, was terror stricken lest the Romans should find trails somewhere over the overhanging cliffs to permit their passage. For the story was so that the Lacedaemonians were, were once surrounded by the Persians, and recently King Philip by the Romans themselves. The Romans not. Now here, Livy of course is talking about uh, King Leonidas. Persians, how they were engulfed, and he, he's talking about the battle that King Philip V fought against the Romans at Aos, 
the Aorus Pass, and uh, he builds. He was surrounded by the Romans by Titus uh, Flaminius. Now, now, uh, so he sent a runner to the Italians in Aglia that they should render at least so much service to him in this war as to seize and hold the mountain tops round about, and that the Romans might find no way to cross. Now, on hearing this message, disagreement arose among the Italians. Part thought that they should obey the king's order and go, and part said they should, they should wait at Ilaclia for either turn of fortune, that if the king were defeated by the consul, they might, have, they might have fresh troops in readiness to bring aid to their cities. But if he were conquered, that they might pursue the Romans that scattered in the fight. Now each party not only adhered to its own opinion, but acted at its own decision. Now 2,000 remained at Ilaglia, and 2,000 occupied a separate three detachment, occupied Calidromo, Rotundia, and Dijios. These are the names of the peaks, the three peaks. Now when the consul saw that the high ground was held by the Italians, he sent Marcus Porcius Cato and Lucius Valerius Flaccus, Lieutenant of Consulate Rank, with 2,000 picked troops each against the strong points of the Italians. Now Valerius Flaccus attacked the Rotundia and the Dicius Hills, and Marcus Cazzo attacked the Calidromium. Right, now. Now, uh, so uh, he gives a speech. The Romans rest, the consul gives uh, the kind of, Right, now at daybreak the battle signal was displayed and the consul deployed his forces on a narrow front according to the nature and limits of the position. Now when the king saw the standards of the army, he too let out his troops. Part of his light armed troops he placed before the rampart in the front line and then he drew up the main body of the Macedonians. So really caused Macedonians the troops of the king. Uh, whom they call Sesophori, as a bulkwood around the fortification itself. Now next to them, on the left flank, he placed a detachment of dart throwers and archers and slingers. At the very base of the mountain to harass the exposed flank of the enemy from high ground. Now on the right, next to the Macedonians, at the very end of the fortifications, where the ground, impassable as far as the sea, closed it in this rocky mud, quicksands, he stations the elephants with a usual guard and behind them the cavalry. Then, short distance to the rear, the rest of the troops in the second line. Now the Macedonians standing in front of the rampart at first easily held off the Romans, who were trying the approaches from every direction with much assistance from those from the high ground, were hurling a veritable cloud of missiles from their slings as well as darts and arrows at the same time. Then, as a greater and more resistible pressure was placed upon them by the enemy, driven from their places, they gradually withdrew their ranks and fell back and signed the fortifications. Uh, now, thence from the rampart, they almost made another rampart from the spears held out in front of them. Now, and the height of the rampart was so moderate that it both offered its, its defenders high ground from which to fight and held the enemy within thrusting distance below them on the account of the strength of the spears. Many who rashly drew near the rampart were run through and either would have withdrawn with their task unaccomplished or more would have perished had not Marcus Porcius Cato, having dislodged the Italians from the heights of the Gallidromium and killed a large part of them, for he had caught them off their guard and many of them sleep, shown himself on the hill which overlooked the camp. Now Valerius Flaccus did not enjoy the same fortune as Tychius in Rotundia, having tried in vain to get up to those forts. Now the Macedonians and the others who were in the king's camp at first, uh, while there was nothing visible in the distance except the crowd and the column, believed that the Italians had seen the battle from afar and were coming to their assistance. But as soon as the standards and arms uh, rec recognized close at hand revealed their mistake, such terror all at once seized them that they all threw away their arms and fled. Both the walls and the narrowness of the valley through which they had to pass hindered their pursuers, and most of all the fact that the elephants brought up the rear, uh, and these the infantry could pass only with difficulty, and the cavalry not at all, since the horses were frightened, 
caused a great disturbance within the rail ranks and the battle. Some time uh, was consumed in the plunder. Some time was, was consumed in the plunder of the camp. Nevertheless, the Romans pursued the enemy that day as far as Scarfia. Now the Romans captured the, the camp of the key. Now they not, not only killed and captured many of the men and horses on the way, but they also killed the elephants, which they could not take and return to camp. This had been attacked during the time the battle was going on by the Aetolians, who were holding Miraclia with their garrison, and without any results, consumed with considerable bonus on the undertaking. So the uh, Aetolians made sortie from uh, Iraklia. Uh, during the third watch of the night, the consul set on the cavalry to pursue the enemy. At daybreak, daybreak advanced the legionary standards. Now the king had gone a considerable distance ahead, inasmuch as he had not ceased his headlong flight until he reached Elathia. There, as soon as he collected the scanty leavings of the vassal and flight with a little band of half armed men, he withdrew to Halkis. Now the Roman cavalry did not overtake the king himself at Lenathia, but a great part of the column stopping either from weariness or because, because they had lost their way, as was natural for men fleeing without guides, uh, over strange roads was dispersed and destroyed. Uh, not, nor did anyone out of the whole army escape with the exception of 500 men who were with the king, a small number even out of the 10,000 soldiers. Uh, were killed and more than 500 captured along with 230 military standards. Now, 150 Romans perished in the actual shock of the battle and from those who defended themselves against the attack of the Etonians, uh, not more than 50 were killed. Now of course these, these are propaganda figures by Livy. Uh, he suggests that 10,000, that over 10,000 Men of the king, 10,000 men of the king, and a few Etonians were killed, and only 200 Romans were killed, of course. Of course, the number, the number of men who were killed by the king, or at least like 5,000 men of the king were killed, along with many Etonians. And of course, the, uh, the casualty figures for the Greeks are always in these uh, propaganda sources um, lower and the Roman casualties higher. So, oh, so, well, an elite and Titus Livy is not such a propagandist. I mean, there are worse historians than that. Anyway, but most of the sources always have the Greek or the Celtic or the Spanish or the uh, Carthaginian casualties higher and the Romans lower. So, anyway, so this is the Battle of Thermopylae. Hardly anyone knows about this battle, everyone knows about the stupid, uh, about, about King Leonidas. And uh, they did a stupid movie about Leonidas uh, with, with hardly any historical fans in it. Hardly anyone knows about the battle with the Gauls, and hardly anyone knows about the great king. And after this, after the battle, the Romans capture Heraclea, they defeat his fleet at Goigos, and the next year, in 190 BC, the Scipios defeat the king at Magnesia, and that's the end of the empire. The empire becomes a satellite with weak kings until it was finally dissolved the Seleucid Empire. It was finally dissolved in 63 BC by Gnaeus Pompey himself. King Antiochus who fought the Romans. King Antiochus who fought the Romans at Thermopylae and at Magnesia.